This lesson is an overview of computed tomography. Computed tomography is easily one of the most important scientific innovations of the last 100 years. You might know that the first CT scanners were head-only units, which generated just one image over a course of several hours. Today, things have changed. Some scanners collect over 300 slices of image data in under one second. CT has become the backbone of acute stroke care, trauma imaging, cancer imaging, and numerous other clinical considerations. Of special importance is the ability of a CT scanner to diagnose internal pathologies that previously required exploratory surgeries. As an example, the image that you see on the screen is a ruptured abdominal aorta, which may have required an exploratory surgery for affirmative diagnosis without CT. And the same thing was often true of other internal traumatic injuries, things like spleen fractures. Unlike traditional radiographs, which produce just two dimensions of image data, which are acquired from an x-ray source, CT scanners actually create three dimensions of image data that we call a volume of data. And it does this by acquiring projections from all around the patient as opposed to just one view. This means, of course, more radiation dose to the patients, but it also means significantly more information is available to make a well-informed diagnosis. The images that you see on the screen are examples of how a CT data set can be reconstructed or reformatted to be projected from different imaging planes. The first image is the traditional axial view, the second image is the coronal view, and the last image is of course the sagittal view. Not surprisingly, CT has really created quite a niche in the world of diagnostic imaging. And one of the reasons of this is the addition of contrast-enhanced imaging, which gives us the ability to distinguish internal structures that otherwise might have been invisible to us. The two images that you see on the screen are of the same patient at the same slice level. The image on the left was performed without contrast, and the image on the right was performed with contrast. Without contrast, this large kidney mass, which is called a Wilms tumor, is really poorly visualized. You can see something is there, but that's just about all you can see. In the second image with contrast, this mass and other abdominal structures are much more clearly defined because of the contrast enhancement. So how exactly does a CT scan produce images? Some of the basic principles of CT imaging are actually very similar to the general principles of radiography, especially the idea of x-ray attenuation. As the x-ray beam spirals around the patient, a large fraction of the individual x-ray photons are absorbed by the body or deflected out of the scanner. The remaining x-ray photons pass through the body and help to create the digital profile of the patient's internal anatomy. Just like general radiography, CT scanners detect and display tissues based on their density. Tissue differentiation in CT is entirely dependent on the tissue density which is why we often inject contrast to make sure that we can see certain structures that otherwise might blend in with the surrounding structures. CT is really pretty popular. The most common CT examinations ordered across all medical settings include these five exams. CT head without contrast, usually for trauma or some unknown pathology of the brain. Also CT abdomen and pelvis with contrast for a variety of indications. CT chest with contrast, CT abdomen and pelvis without contrast, especially for renal stone, and then finally CT angiography of the chest. CT of the head without contrast by itself represents nearly 25% of all CT scans performed at most institutions. CT of the abdomen and pelvis with contrast represent about 20% of all CT scans. So here's the basic facts that we need to know about CT. Number one, CT is awesome. Secondly, CT is used for a number of indications, but it's especially important for stroke, trauma, cancer care, and several other factors. Surgeries can sometimes be avoided by CT because it helps us to see internal pathologies that used to require an exploratory surgery. CT can be reformatted to multiple imaging planes. The traditional view is axial, but sagittal and coronal views are also possible. And finally, CT displays tissue based on the density of the underlying tissues. So that's an introduction to computed tomography.